Hi everyone and welcome to the next Orca lesson. In this lesson we will be learning about marine litter, one of the many dangers that whales, dolphins, porpoises and other marine wildlife faces in the ocean. And this is the second Orca lesson about marine litter. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. Our vision is oceans alive with whales and dolphins. So from the first orca lesson about marine litter, we know that marine litter is any man-made object lost, discarded, disposed of or abandoned that enters the sea. Marine litter comes from the land with about 80% of marine litter originating from the land with 20% coming from sea sources. The most problematic litter is made of plastic, as this is a material that never goes away. We know that humans dump more than 10 million tonnes of rubbish each year into the world's oceans, and we know that marine litter is entirely down to human activity, and therefore it is down to us to stop it in the future. So first of all, where do you think this litter was found? All of this litter you can see in this picture was floating in the sea, where it was eaten by a baby killer whale. All of these items were found in its stomach after it washed up dead on a beach. The contents included a yoghurt pot, crisp, sweet and noodle wrappers, and even the remains of a shoe. And all of these items were made of plastic, which, as we know, never goes away. Once it is made, it never disappears, and it is in our environment forever. So there are two ways that marine litter can harm whales, dolphins, porpoises, sharks, turtles, as well as many other different species of marine wildlife. The first way it can harm wildlife is ingestion. When these animals eat litter floating in the water column, thinking that it's food. These animals don't know what plastic is. They think that what they are eating is food and they're eating to survive. So it's quite understandable why they would eat plastic thinking that it's food. You would be forgiven for thinking that this was a jellyfish floating in the water, but it's actually a piece of plastic and it looks quite like a plastic bag in this instance. Can you name an animal that feeds mainly on jellyfish? Turtles do. Some species of turtle only eat jellyfish, so they are particularly prone to eating plastic bags and other pieces of plastic floating in the water because they look so much like their favourite food. Many other marine species also eat jellyfish, including dolphins, tuna, sharks, swordfish and even penguins. As we already know, the Cuvier's beaked whale dives into the depths to find its favourite prey, the ghost squid, as well as many other squid species. But this picture here shows over 30 plastic bags that were found inside a Cuvier's beaked whale's stomach. This animal was found stranded on a beach in Norway and scientists were able to look inside its stomach to see why it had died and this is what they found. This albatross chick was being fed food from its mother but the mother albatross didn't know that she was feeding her chick plastic. A lot of plastic floats, and what seabirds do is when they're gliding over the ocean, they pick up anything on the surface of the water that they think is food. In this case, it was plastic. Can you work out what any of these items are that were in this albatross chick's stomach? Items such as cigarette lighters, plastic combs, lots of plastic pieces and bottle caps were found. If you look closely, you can see that the animal itself is starting to decompose, but the plastic is still very much intact and still very recognisable. So this again shows that natural materials will degrade, but plastic does not. So what happens is these animals eat plastic that they think is food. As we already know, plastic is a man-made material, so it's not natural, so it never breaks down and it never goes away. For this reason, when something plastic is eaten, it does not get digested by the stomach, so it sits in the animal's stomach. As the animal eats more and more plastic, its stomach starts to fill up. 
And when you're full up, you don't really feel like eating, do you? So the animal stops feeding as it thinks its stomach is full up with food. But in reality, its stomach is filled with plastic, which doesn't give the animal any energy or any nutrition. The animal eventually starves to death because its stomach is so full of plastic that it can't actually fit any real nutritious food inside its stomach. Think about how uncomfortable that would be as well. But as we know, the plastic in the ocean isn't just large pieces, but small microplastics too. And if we think about how a baleen whale feeds, you can see that they can't pick out bits of plastic amongst a swarm of krill. They can't pick food out of their mouths like we can, or spit food back out again. They are under the impression that everything they are engulfing and swallowing is food. So this huge whale here is feeding on loads and loads of krill, but look at all the tiny bits of microplastics amongst that swarm of krill as well. Whales, dolphins and porpoises are top of the food chain. So it's not just eating large or small pieces of plastic directly that harms them. They can also accumulate it up the food chain. For example, this tiny planktonic copepod here has eaten five tiny pieces of plastic. They are so small that you cannot even see them very well underneath a microscope. And then a krill comes along and doesn't just eat one copepod, but eats, say for example, 50. If each one of these copepods had five pieces of plastic in it, that equals 250 plastic pieces, which are now inside the krill's stomach. But not before long, the krill gets eaten by a blue whale. But the blue whale doesn't eat just one krill, oh no. The blue whale can eat 40 million krill a day. So if each one of those krill had 250 pieces of plastic in it, that would equal 10,000 million pieces of plastic in the blue whale's stomach. And the plastic doesn't just float on the ocean surface or in the water column. In 2019, an American explorer has found plastic waste on the seafloor whilst breaking the record for the deepest ever dive. This explorer descended nearly 11 kilometres, or 7 miles, to the deepest place in the ocean, the Pacific Ocean's Mariana Trench. He found sea creatures, but also found a plastic bag and sweet wrappers. And plastic has also even been found buried in sea ice, so it really is everywhere, affecting all types of ocean wildlife and all of the different ocean ecosystems too. But animals don't just eat plastic, they can also get caught and tangled in it, especially long fishing lines or fishing nets that have either been lost or discarded over the side of fishing vessels. This derelict fishing gear can kill or injure countless marine mammals, seabirds, fish and invertebrates annually. In addition to this, other items such as plastic bags and six-pack drink holders can also cause entanglement. The chances of survival are poor in animals that are unable to free themselves from the litter. When animals become tangled up, they may exhaust themselves trying to break free and might even drown, especially in marine mammals that have to get up to the surface to breathe. They might be caught in a net underneath the water, unable to get back up to the surface. And their ability to move, try and find and kill food to eat, or avoid predators themselves, would be severely impaired, and they often get wounds and infections from where the litter has cut into them. Ghost fishing also occurs when fishing gear is lost and continues to catch fish and other species without any control by the fishermen. These fishing gear includes huge gill nets as well as traps and pots which may continue catching fish, lobsters and crabs on the sea floor for a really long time. These nets can also get tangled up in corals, kelp forests and other seaweed 
preventing them from growing as well. And I just mentioned gill nets briefly then, and gill nets are very harmful for wildlife. A gill net is a single wall of netting which is anchored onto the seabed to catch any fish that swim into it. After a gill net has been used, it might even be lost by the fishermen. And for weeks, months and even years, this gill net can continue to catch fish, turtles, sharks, even whales and dolphins and a huge amount of other marine wildlife species for a very long time after the net was originally set. So the shocking facts are that one million birds and a hundred thousand marine mammals and turtles die every year after becoming trapped by plastic or mistakenly eating it as food. And by the year 2050, scientists have predicted that there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish by weight. These are both such shocking facts, so we need to try and reduce the amount of plastics, especially that we are using every day, and also trying to stop it getting into our marine and land ecosystems as well. So to recap, we know from this lesson that animals can be harmed by marine litter by getting caught in it, ingesting it, or both. Animals can eat large pieces of plastic or small pieces, and they can also eat prey that have ingested plastic too. Animals getting entangled in marine litter is also a huge problem. In the next lesson, we will look at how small changes in your everyday life can make huge differences for marine wildlife. Thank you for listening to another orca lesson. If you want to learn more about orca, please do visit our website. It's www.orcaweb.org.uk. Thank you very much.